In an era of music streaming and digital downloads, an old format is making a comeback. Stephanie Sai has more on how modern music audiences are rewinding and hitting play on a cassette tape revival. It's part of our arts and culture series, Canvas. Electronic music artist Moral has always had a passion for cassettes. Growing up in Northern Virginia, her parents' tape collection was a way to connect with her Iranian heritage. I'll go through their old tape collection of old Iranian music from classical to pop. And that's kind of when I started discovering Iranian music on my own and deciding what types of Iranian music I like the most. Today, as an independent artist in Los Angeles, she draws inspiration for her current projects from that same music, and even the tapes themselves. The older tapes would have a lot of warping to them, and like the sounds would get pitched down, or they would warble, and I was really intrigued by that at a very young age. So using you know, that experience, I ended up kind of incorporating that same feeling of hearing these like warped tapes when I was younger in my own music by warping the samples later on. Moral's first project in 2019 was released solely on cassette, and the 200 copies sold out instantly. While her music may be experimental, cassettes couldn't be more old school. They became popular in the 70s and 80s, an alternative to vinyl. Compact discs had overtaken both formats by the early 90s, but the emergence of digitized music and streaming services has eclipsed them all. Yet cassette tapes are having a moment. According to Luminate, an entertainment industry data collector, U.S. tape sales increased by more than 440 percent between 2015 and 2022. No, it's not the same as it was. In the past few years, mainstream artists like Harry Styles, Billie Eilish and Taylor Swift have all capitalized on the fad. It's a resurgence similar to that of vinyl records, albeit on a much smaller scale. There's only a handful of cassette manufacturers left in the U.S. One of them is Nick Kashishian, who still has the original equipment he used when cassette tapes were in their heyday. I retired in 2018, and a month later I keep getting phone calls from everybody that they want cassettes, and I know there's nobody around here that makes cassettes and I, I kept all my equipment. I said, you know what, let me just do that. He manufactures as many as 15,000 cassettes a month, a far cry from the nearly 60,000 his business produced weekly during peak popularity. So worth coming out of retirement for? Oh, definitely, definitely. I, I'm, I'm not a guy that can sit home and watch TV 24 seven. Plus, he prefers the sound of music on cassette. I love more slow, soft music, romantic music, those kind of things. And my favorite artist is Lionel Richie. I have all my recordings on cassettes. I, in my car, I have the cassette player. Uh, in my house, I have 10 cassette players. But the cassette has never been the best medium to preserve sound. CDs and vinyl both offer a clearer and more consistent listening experience. Tapes have shorter lifespans, and things like heat and recorder malfunctions can cause parts of the cassettes to degrade faster than other mediums. But for some, that's the magic. For a lot of people who've collected them for years, some of the anomalies and imperfections are part of the charm of listening to tapes. Writer Mark Masters is working on a book about the history of cassettes and has a large collection himself. People want old stuff on cassette as much as they want new stuff. Mm. They really helped birth total genres. I mean, hip hop probably wouldn't exist the way we know it if it weren't for cassette tapes. It started as a DJ medium, and the DJs would DJ live parties, and people wanted to hear these parties, so people would bring cassette players and tape them. It facilitated people being able to make and distribute their own music in ways that had never really happened before. At under $10, they were also more accessible than vinyl records. The whole point of making tapes was to have a cheaper format that, that more people could use and more people could share. Another thing that made cassette tapes so popular back in the day was the debut of the Sony Walkman in 1979. It made the music format portable. Allowing people to create a soundtrack for their everyday lives. I pretty much took my Walkman everywhere. I remember. Um, 
even turning it up loud enough that I could mow the lawn and still <laughs> hear tapes through my headphones. Going beyond our galaxy, or at least Marvel's galaxy, there is something grounding about tunes played on an old Walkman. The cassette released in conjunction with the Guardians of the Galaxy's second film was the highest selling cassette last year. 17,000 were sold. Is it just a novelty or are they making a statement? I imagine people who buy that might not even actually listen to the tape. It's just a neat thing to have. But I, at the same time, if, if there's people who like tapes who are buying tapes from these artists, that's a great thing. For indie artists like Moral, tapes are more than a throwback. They're blowback to a streaming industry that has left them high and dry. If you're making experimental or underground music, you cannot survive in this ecosystem. So it's about all of us thinking about how we can support artists more. Moral hopes her projects will live on, on tape. Hearing how it disintegrates through time. And perhaps reaches through time, the way it did for her. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Stephanie Sai. How cool is that? You remember the first tape you bought? Uh, not anymore, no. <laughs> Everyone's going to be thinking about, about it now. Right.